Hi guys, today I'm doing a video on things that you don't need to worry about when you're doing an information technology degree. Now, these things may go for a lot of degrees, especially tech degrees, but these are just things I worried about when I was doing my IT degree that I later realized I wasted a lot of sweat on. So, before we start, if you like this kind of content about the information technology degree, please go ahead and give me a like. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. I do a lot of different kinds of videos and that lets me know that this is more of what you wanna see. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing is knowing everything. When you go and you take a tech degree, especially an IT degree, you see a lot of different things, an entire world infrastructure of technology. Now, you're not gonna know all of it, I'll tell you that right now. The truth is, you don't even really wanna to try to know all of it. Even if you could know all of it, you're gonna end up doing one thing. Nobody knows everything, and nobody knows everything about any specialization. All you need to do is be good enough to get things done. So it's easy when you see people that know more than you to feel like they know everything, but they really don't. Your professors, they don't know everything, not even close. They know just enough to get stuff done and teach it to you. So don't get worried if you see this huge expansive field and you think you have to be an expert in everything that you do. Every class you have to know everything about the thing that they're talking about because you really don't. It's quite the opposite. You just need to know enough to get it done. Okay, so the next thing is people that seem smarter or better than you. So the reason for this is first, they're probably not as smarter or better than you than you think. A lot of people in college are a little bit young and so because of this, some of them feel like they have to prove to everyone else how good they are. And they will work long, hard hours just for that moment where they step up in front of class to show that really crazy cool project that's levels above everyone else's, maybe running on a phone or something like that. Things that maybe you can't even imagine how to start with. So another thing to keep in mind is people specialize. and. When someone goes down a path of specialization, which is something that you should do too, their projects, if you know they go along with that specialization, might look really darn good. And it's possible that if you go down your path of specialization, you can also do some really impressive stuff too. Now the thing about this is when you're doing it, a lot of times what you do, you feel like it's not that impressive. And I had the same problem. You know, I had my project where I worked on a website and had a server and I, people could log in and that was all running out of my apartment. Now, at the time, I thought that was some scrappy project. I didn't really think much of it at all. I thought it kind of sucked, and it really didn't. I later kind of figured out that other people were looking at that kind of in awe of me, and I was that smart person to them. I never really would have thought that, and that person you're thinking is that smart or better person probably feels the same way. Now, there are those types of people that no matter what happens, they will always act like it was all easy. You, you take a really hard test, you know, average was really low, and they just say, oh, it was easy. You know, there are people like that in the world that they're not really in connection with reality, basically. They're not really that smart. They just act like they're smart. And sometimes they're the kids that do the worst. So don't worry about those people. Honestly, if it's someone that's smart at everything, they're still gonna have to specialize in one thing. And if you can specialize in that one thing better, you're gonna end up better off than they are. Okay, so the next thing is don't let other people's opinions of what you wanna specialize in or what you're considering specializing in dictate the way that you go. Don't let it worry you because the only thing that really matters is are there good jobs in it? How much money can you make? And do you like it? And what I mean by that is take programming, for instance. So there's different types of programming. And there's this thing where the people writing JavaScript, writing websites, people writing C++, you know, might not think they're real programmers because some of the stuff that they're writing is running in programs that were written in C++. The problem with this is you can take this all the way back to a really old guy saying his keyboard only had two keys on it, zero and one. So don't let this type of thing bother you. Another example is when I started my internship at ServiceNow, it was a support role. And I worried about what people would think of me. Oh, he got an internship in support. He's sitting in a call center calling people, right? And that's not really what it was. It was the word that actually bothered me. I looked at support as kind of a lower role because you had to work with people of all things. Now, that internship taught me so much. I wouldn't be where I am in my career without it. 
and not just for the people skills, but those really did come in handy. So beyond that, I learned a lot of technical skills, probably more than other people did in internships that sounded a lot more technical. I talked to people that had developer internship roles where they almost only did data entry. So the thing is, don't worry about the wording, worry about what you're getting out of it. So the next thing is the Mickey Mouse classes. And what I mean by Mickey Mouse classes is your lower level maths, your Englishes, things like that, that every single degree has to take. Now you do need to pass these, so worry about them enough to pass. And you should try to do your best because if you can do well in these classes, it can you know boost your GPA, which looks good on a resume. But if you're not good at writing in English too, that really doesn't mean that much as to your success with an IT degree or any kind of tech degree. If you're going to get a specialized skill, you know, writing in any environment is important, but college level writing, not so much. In any type of engineering, you really should be speaking in bullet points anyway, not essays. So the next thing is being bad at something. So in an IT degree especially, you're gonna do a lot of different types of things. You're gonna be bad at at least a little bit of it. And the reason for this is because it varies so much and you're just not gonna be able to be good at everything. That's not what's important. What's important is that you can find something that you are good at and go down that trail and specialize in it. So you just have to, you know, you do have to worry enough that you don't want to fail the class, especially if it's degree specific. For example, I did discrete mathematics and I did not like it. I do not think I did well in it, but I got through it. Now, I felt bad about it. I felt like I should be good at everything. This is gonna be my career and I don't understand this and I still don't understand it after the class. What does that say about me? Well, I'll tell you what, this many years in, I've never ever used discrete mathematics in my job at all. Even though it's a degree specific course, something that goes along with information technology. I'm not good at it. If I had to try to do it today, I'd have a hard time but it doesn't matter because I don't have to. So the next thing is things that look complicated. Don't let complications scare you. Realize that everything you're learning about here was made by people and they probably weren't that much smarter than you. Their, you know, their brain is the same size as yours is. And the difference is they may know something that you don't. But what you need to do in the face of complication is break it down to simplicity. And this can be done because to be built up originally, it had to start simple because it was made by humans. It's difficult to do this, especially at first when you see these really complicated things up on a PowerPoint, you think that there's no way you can do it. And you know, you're in over your head. This is too hard for you. But if you spend some time just opening it up and just look at it and use logic, that's the biggest thing. Everything has to run on logic. And this is where knowing the basics really well can help you break down a complicated problem. Because when you read about something really complicated like AES encryption, it's so overwhelming. But if you can look at the little pieces and then when things don't make sense, apply logic. Because I'll tell you what, there's a possibility that the professor that wrote that thing, you know, the thing teaching you about AES, he could be wrong. He could be explaining something wrong. There might be a typo or use the wrong word. I've seen that happen. It happens all the time. So don't get in this mindset that everything you're reading must make sense and you're just stupid because you can't figure it out. Just apply logic to what it's saying. If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. And then you need to get further explanation. Maybe there's just something you weren't thinking of that happens all the time, or maybe it was a typo. So. Don't let complications scare you. You're going to deal with it quite a bit in your career. You just have to kind of take a deep breath and realize you're going to have to deal with this and it's going to take a while. Start a little bit at a time, apply logic to each thing, take notes if necessary, and before you know it, you'll have an overall understanding of it. So the next thing is other related degrees. Now, first of all, I'm not trying to say that IT is the best tech degree in the world. And I'm also not saying that it doesn't make sense to consider other degrees because it does. But once you get far enough in that it doesn't really make sense to switch, don't worry about it. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I always felt this thing of, I should have done computer science. The computer science kids are gonna get better jobs than me. I'm gonna be stuck working the help desk while they're doing the thing that I really wanted to do. Well, guess what? That didn't turn out to be true at all. In fact, I'm doing just as good, if not better, than most of the computer science people I knew. 
and a lot of them are doing very well too. IT is a very good degree, and if you are far enough in to not switch and you feel the urge to, I would urge you to keep going because it's probably gonna cost you a lot more than it's gonna gain you. The actual degree you get isn't nearly as important as the skills that you have. So what I would recommend is instead of thinking about switching the degree, having to retake certain things and you know just a little bit different version of this and a little different version of that, spending that much more money, going that much more into debt, and getting that much older, just look at something to specialize in. That's what's really gonna matter. Honestly, between a CS and an IT degree, the specialization is what will make or break you. Somebody that has a CS degree with no specialization, just generalized, they will have a hard time finding a job. And someone with an IT degree that is very specialized in something, they'll have a much easier time. So instead of actually thinking, oh, I should do this other degree, think I should specialize in this thing because that's what really gets you the job. So the last thing not to worry about is other people's failure. Now you may see this where other people either fail a test and drop out or they get their degree and can't be successful. I knew someone in particular who he got his IT degree way before me, way before I even started, and he just couldn't get himself a job. Now I'm not gonna try to post-mortem his career as to why that happened, but there are certain things that you need to do when you're doing any kind of tech degree. One of those includes specializing. And if you don't have some kind of specialization, if you just sat through the classes, did the bare minimum, again, not saying he did, but he didn't have a specialization. And having a specialization can really help you. And it kind of goes in tiers, right? So you can have networking, databases, programming. I'm telling you to go beyond that with specialization. So programming itself has specializations. There's different kind of programming languages. Those languages themselves have even further specialization with different types of frameworks and different types of things that can use those programming languages. And these days there's a lot of things like that that a lot of people use and can't find anyone qualified to develop on. So same with databases. You can know database concepts, that's something, it's a start. But then you can go into something like a particular type of database, like MySQL. Beyond that, actually knowing how you're gonna work with a database. Are you gonna be a database admin, a database architect? You can get into these things, and the further you get in, the easier it's gonna be for you to find a job outside of college. And sometimes that last tier, you almost need an internship to do, but if you're not achieving it, don't worry, just getting that specialized will probably be enough to get you something. So, okay guys, that's it. That's my advice for things not to worry about. I hope if you're either trying to start this degree or you're currently doing it that you're not worrying too much or if you are, you're at least worrying about the right things. Have a good night.